presento, uh, presenterò present you with some uh, remarks about a conference in English, first of all, because it's easier for me, and secondly, because being an international conference, well, I think it's absolutely important to express ourselves in our languages. I want to say something on behalf of the scientific committee, but actually it's uh, mostly my personal remarks. Uh, and I try to sort of think about the reason why for this conference, why focusing on transit camps, why is it so important uh, to talk about this today and why uh, this fits so well to the Fossoli case. So, um, transit. Uh, the uh, the Comitato Scientifico, the advisory board, uh, we were looking uh, for a theme and a set of questions to fit the history and the site of Fossoli into a, a wider discourse, uh, both a historical uh, discourse but also with some clear resonance in the contemporary. What does it mean today to propose Fossoli as a site of remembrance but also as a center of research? Uh, how particularly, uh, how specifically does the case of Fossoli fit both the archive and the map of the contemporary? It's clear from what we've heard already this morning, and I'm understanding uh, from what was said yesterday, although I wasn't able to be here, um, that we can move in several different directions at once. Um, certainly, first of all, we, uh, those of us from outside perhaps, but also those local to uh, Carpi and Fossoli, fit the history of the camp into the history of the Holocaust or the Shoah. Uh, with its wide European dimension, but also, as we've heard, with the complicated ways and not fully understood, not fully acknowledged ways that Italy, that Italy enters into that history. Uh, sorry, the European dimension, but also the complicated ways in which Italy enters into that history, and also at an even more local level, how the town and the region uh, around Fossoli, the communities and networks that intersected with the history of the camp uh, during the period of uh, uh, the Holocaust, um, uh, influenced that history. These are key histories, and there is a great deal of research done, and a great deal of research still to be done. But beyond that, there's also a very powerful symbolic presence of Fossoli, both here and more widely. And perhaps this is something that we perceive further away from Fossoli. So if Fossoli is known beyond Italy, I suspect it's primarily because of those few pages in Primo Levi's remarkable account of it in the second edition uh, of If This Is a Man, particularly. Uh, and it's no coincidence, I think, that Liliana Picciotto Fargion uses a phrase from Levi as the title of her book on Fossoli, l'alba ci colse come un tradimento. In this context, Fossoli is an example, one element in a, an extremely complicated network of hundreds of Nazi or Nazi fascist camps, uh, extermination camps, concentration camps, deportation and holding camps, work camps, prison camps, and varieties and mixtures of these, since many camps serve several of these purposes, as people here will, will know well. So camps like Drancy that I understand was discussed yesterday, uh, Westerbork in Holland, Gurs, Bolzano, even some would categorize Theresienstadt, for example, as uh, a, a analogous to the case of Fossoli, the category of the Durchgangs Lager, the transit camp, as part of one of the kind of functioning elements that allowed the wider concentration universe, l'univers concentrationnaire, Rousset's term, for, uh, which has been adapted, as it were, to use for this complicated network uh, spread well beyond Europe. And as has already been said today, I think, by the mayor, uh, this purview of a wider body or a network of camps takes us well beyond uh, the focus that certain period of the post-war had on the extermination camps, on the concentration camps symbolized by Auschwitz. We're dealing with a different category of camp, but one just as important in making the uh, universe, the concentration universe, function. But there are also key points that push fossily significance uh, beyond the idea that the Nazi concentrationary universe was a closed system of some kind. Uh, 
at least two directions are important here. First of all, the perhaps obvious but nevertheless not always acknowledged fact that the camp, the concentration camp, uh, as a category, as a form of containment of uh, people, has a much longer history, of course, than the Second World War, than the Nazi regime, even than the uh, Gulag Nazi regimes of the mid-20th century. So research by, for example, uh, Nicola Labanca and Michela Cecorulli, but many others also, has shown how the history of the camp goes back at least as far as the late 1800s, and in some sense, if you stretch the category well beyond that as well. So there's a history to the site and the space and the use of the camp in uh, the history of the modern nation state, let's say. Also, and this is a key point that's already been said, as we've just heard, Fossoli has another kind of history beyond the history of the Nazi concentration universe. It has its own long and complex history of use and reuse, uh, both planned and improvised, and indeed of uh, disuse, if I can call that, periods of fallow periods, we would say, uh, in English, where it's not being used at all, where it's semi-abandoned. Uh, as we've just heard, it's been a prisoner of war camp, a fascist internment and prison camp for different categories of prisoners, Jews, anti-fascists, a Nazi or Nazi fascist deportation camp or transit camp, uh, a prison camp for fascists after the war, run uh, by the Allies, uh, a community for orphans, the Nomadelphia experience, a camp for refugees during the Dalmatian period that Marzio was mentioning, and then at various times uh, dismantled, rebuilt in different states of repair and disrepair. These are very important, essential parts of the history that we're trying to probe, I think, with a conference like the one we're at now. Sites of imprisonment, sites of death, with symbolic power and wide European force are also sites which are then repurposed, stripped, reshaped, and indeed in part also lost and empty and abandoned. And these are integral parts uh, of uh, the site's history and not only of this site, other sites have analogous histories. So both these aspects, if you like, that take us beyond uh, the primary uh, mode of attention to Fossoli, a horizontal spread within the period of the Holocaust and the complex networks that that created, and a vertical history across, a vertical uh, spread across a longer history of the idea and category of camps and of Fossoli itself in space and in time. It seems to me that both of these dynamics can be subsumed under the term of transit. Uh, these are, transit becomes a useful way and a concept, a guiding concept for merging models and patterns and sites that taken together offer us a distinctive perspective on, to put it at its grandest, an aspect of modernity itself. So George Gamben is very well known uh, for having coined a kind of uh, uh, epigram that the camp was the the site of the concentration camp, or the camp, was the nomos, the nomos of the modern. This is in his Omos Acha project, uh, that somehow the camp, rep in its embodiment of the state of exception, uh, its enforced exclusion in its extreme biopolitical discipline, it represented something, of, something essential, the underlying order and pattern of modernity itself. But actually, if you adapt your perspective a little bit, as we're doing at this conference uh, today and tomorrow, and indeed yesterday, um, transit is a kind of complementary or alternative category to what Agamben has in mind for some sort of marker of modernity. Transit has an association of mobility, of contingency, of a temporary uh, solution, of migratory patterns, patterns of movement, it captures another view of the modern, based more on fluidity, what Bauman would call the liquidity of the modern, or the postmodern, if you want to use those terms, a site of suspension and of limbo. And in some sense, it's developing, as Agamben does, but in, uh, developing in different directions, uh, Hannah Arendt's fundamental concept of statelessness, or the pariah, or the refugee in her origins of totalitarianism. It's a sort of recovery and repositioning. Uh, of that notion, 
which is perhaps possibly, and this is where we verge onto the contemporary, close to a late idea, a present day idea of what modernity represents. We live more perhaps in a period of transitory modernity than we do in that Agamben uh, uh, idea of the camp, the fixed, closed by a politically a murderous uh, site of the concentration camp as the ordering, the ordering point of the modern. Transit in the contemporary moment obviously points us to movements of migration pushed by a double perspective. On the one hand, migration is a kind of impulse to freedom in the contemporary, but also uh, stretching back over more than a century of uh, modern uh, history. Uh, a, a, an impulse towards freedom, towards asylum, towards escape, but also a kind of negative impulse away from fear, away from hunger, away from violence, and therefore towards a kind of propelling uh, reformation of a, of a potentially global socio-economic reality. Transit sites are one of the key points that again determine this kind of movement, just as they were the nodal points for the concentrationary universe uh, in the 1930s and 1940s. And the analogies between these different kinds of transit and these different historical moments are extremely important and changing all the time. So what are these transit uh, points, these transit camps, but also more generally these sites of transit in space and time? Transit camps and transit sites emerge as temporary sites, typically, and at bottleneck points, points of convergence and then of mass processing, the production of other uh, figures of citizenship or figures of uh, labor, typically. Sometimes these sites are mass production sites, modeled as much on the factory as the death camps were uh, compared to factories of death in the 1960s. This is another kind of production point. So the, perhaps the great global example of this kind of transit site or transit camp is Ellis Island, just off Manhattan in New York. This was literally a transit camp where up to 20 million migrants were processed, most often in a period of hours, through uh, a bureaucratic procedure, through a medical procedure, and then out, disgorged into a new form of citizenship. So Ellis Island was a kind of production line of American citizens around which migration became a kind of founding myth of modern America. What's striking about Ellis Island, what allows us to make the analogies back to an extremely different case like Fossily, is the striking analogy, the similarities of processing that we see for those who entered Ellis Island compared to those who would enter the bureaucratic, bureaucratic systems of uh, imprisonment, transit, deportation, and ultimately extermination in Europe in the middle of the 20th century. The end point is, is of course, opposite from a kind of productive citizenship in North America with its own forms of violence and coercion, but nevertheless towards a kind of living future and, of course, towards death in the concentration camp universe. George Perec, who visited Ellis Island in the 1970s, was extremely struck by this, powerfully struck by this analogy, calling Ellis Island a, a non-place, a kind of formless place, a place of exile, but also a place of contingency, of what he called errance et espoir, of wandering and hope. So Ellis Island is a powerful example of this kind of rapid temporality of the transit site where in hours tens of thousands of millions were processed through into new forms of citizenship, just as in minutes, if not hours, in the extermination camps, uh, uh, millions of Jews and others were murdered by the Nazis. This is a powerful and, and uh, shocking analogy that, uh, that we should hold on to as we build this category of transit. Sometimes, though, these transit sites are not so rapid and not so productive and kind of Fordist in their, in their patterns. Sometimes they can turn into suspended sites which last months and indeed years. They can, can become suspended and unproductive and can therefore become a kind of problem for the regime of control, the state control uh, that lies around them. And this, too, is an extremely important dimension of the temporality of transit sites. It's something we should interrogate, I think, in a conference like today's.
Typically, unlike Ellis Island, typically uh, these are these transit sites and these transit camps are smaller scale. It's extremely important, I think, to focus on that as the model for the site of transit. Small scale, localized camps embedded in local settings and local communities and local populations by definition. And therefore, again, to some degree, unlike the model we might have in our mind of the concentration camp, which is in some way hidden away, uh, either denied, as it were, and disavowed by local populations. Uh, one thinks of the uh, powerful uh, opening of Landsman's film Shoah, which visits Treblinka and sees how it is kind of invisible to the apparently invisible to the lo local population. Uh, typically, the transit camp is not like that. It's embedded in local settings and populations. And typically, as we've seen with the case of Fossily, it changes. It's flexible and malleable in its use and its purpose over time, and it changes spatially and architectonically, and it changes in its uh, regime of control as well, different regulations of control, and we need to look at the patterns of development of those regulations of control. In its setting also, I talked about its setting in bottleneck points, points where flows of population, as it were, get stuck and need to be processed and, uh, uh, and released out into whatever the future uh, community or, or society might, can, might, might, might hold for them. Uh, transit points are also, as the term suggests by definition, uh, embedded in networks of transit. And I mean transport networks. This again seems obvious, but it's an extremely important point to research. Uh, camps emerge along train tracks or nearby, at transit points, along roads, at nodal points in mobility, in networks of transport and no no mobility, as well as at those bottleneck points in migration flows. And very often, although this is not the case in Fossily, interestingly, very often these are also entry points, border points. This applies, say, to the camp known as the jungle in Calais, for example, and indeed in Lampedusa or Ventimiglia, or indeed in uh, the station, the central station in Milan, which is not at a border, but is a point of transport and a kind of departure point. And of course, it applies to Ellis Island as well. So there's a kind of mixed combination of sites, functions, connections to other networks. And of course, transport networks are fundamental def defining structures of uh, any kind of modernity, which has to take into account my globalization, international trade and commerce, uh, as well as migratory patterns. It means that there are all sorts of different statuses that these camps can have, and we need to set them in dialogue with each other. The case of Fossil is one case in point, and the other, many others offer us different patterns. So these transit camps can be, for example, I'll give you some binaries, institutional or informal. They can be heavily policed with rules and regulations uh, linked to local, national, uh, international law, or they can be improvised and informal and therefore loose in their terms of control. They can be planned in advance or they can become in response to an emergency, uh, a crisis, an international disaster which throws up a war, uh, a famine, an earthquake which throws up uh, flows of migration and that this needs to be controlled. They can also, as I was saying before, be hidden from the local population or open uh, fluid in their kind of ap uh, openness to the to, to the to the community to the local communities and these binaries means that there are struggles for the for control of the site perhaps not in and at, in and of themselves and at the time because it tends to be a top down vertical structure of control the transit site or the transit camp um, but certainly for a struggle for the control of the meanings of these camps and the memories and how they fit into local histories and memories and customs. So uh, underneath or alongside an overarching system, often an international or globalized or transnational system, or a uh, violent system of exclusion, expulsion, or indeed that kind of factory model of processing, management, and production of citizenship, there is also the possibility of a kind of negotiation of memory, of control, of meaning. And sometimes, indeed, within that, alongside that, 
growing out of that in a kind of uh, temporal development, there are also possibilities within these camps and within these sites of resistance, with a small R or a capital R, of different kinds of community, of improvised forms of uh, domesticity. So if Arendt's concept of statelessness was, was uh, also a notion of homelessness, um, then camp communities can create new kinds of community, new kinds of home, temporary, improvised. Uh, a researcher, Nando Sigona, has written an article with the slightly ugly neologism, uh, but useful perhaps, camp zenship, <laughs> the citizenship of the camps, um, as a new category, which is not quite the same as the bare life, as it were that Agamben talks about as the typical status of the human being in the other kind of camp. So it seems to me that Fossoli is an extremely powerful example of the possible different spectrums of meaning and the histories, both vertical and horizontal, that sites of transit and transit camps can have in history and in modernity. In its, as a site, in its buildings, in its spaces, in its modes of use and reuse and disuse, in its connectedness with different kinds of networks of transit and transport. And I hope, uh, and it seems to me, that we will be hearing uh, a great deal more about all these and other problems in a very rich program, and so I look forward to uh, learning more about uh, Europe's sites of transit in the next few days. Thank you.